Hi, I'm David, and in this episode, we'll be taking a look at this neat little 24-digit 7-segment display that I built. Why? And also, we'll take a look at the code that uh, I wrote to run it. So let's get started. This project has its roots in the previous display that I created for my last Assembly Language Basics video. I really liked the way it helped to illustrate what was going on with the commands and doing so using electronic components, which just seems to fit really well with videos about electronics. The only problem is that it's limited to showing only binary numbers, and the green LEDs aren't bright enough to really show up that well. So I came up with this new design which solves a lot of the issues with the previous incarnation. This display uses six of my seven segment four digit display modules and is driven by 674HC575AP serial to parallel shift registers. And with the current setup only seven I.O. bits from the PIC16F882 are used. Going this route has a number of advantages with the first and probably the biggest being reduced current draw on the MCU itself. The PIC16F882 just doesn't have enough power to drive all these displays directly, nor does it have all the I.O. ports that would be required. The only problem I really encountered when coming up with this design is that I didn't have enough of the shift registers on hand, so I had to scavenge them from my LED dot matrix build. These shift registers are pretty neat. They allow the data in the shift portion of the IC to be updated while the previous data is retained in a latch. This means I can leave that current displayed information on while loading the next data set. Here's a great demonstration of that. I've got two shift registers set up here. One's going to show us the data being shifted in and the other will show us the data that's actually latched. So let's go ahead and go through a, a sample, couple of samples here and uh, you can see exactly how this shift register works. Now back to the display. I assigned each four digit display a single shift register. That's a total of six shift registers to run the display. And each display is broken down into four zones, digit one, digit two, digit three, and digit four. Each zone covers all the specified digits in all the displays. So zone one covers digit one of display one, digit one of display two, and so on. You know, I think a demonstration about now would do wonders for this explanation. So, I've changed the code in the display here, and I've slowed down the refresh rate of the entire display so we can actually see what's going on. Now, as we progress through each cycle, the refresh rate will increase until we reach the normal setting where you won't be able to see individual digits turning on and off. And here we go, it's, it's picking up speed. And finally, we're, we reach the point where the human eye can't see the digits switching on and off. So it looks like all the digits are on all the time. Okay, so let's take a few moments to look at the routines in the code responsible for updating the display. I'm not going to cover everything in the code, just the more important elements. And it's also important to note that this code isn't complete but very much still in the development phase. So some routines are incomplete or missing altogether. Let's start with these memory declarations here. These lines here reserve 24 memory locations that are used to keep track of what characters each digit currently is showing on the display. I've broken this memory down into six separate names, each representing a four byte array. Here we've got the main routine that is for the moment broken down into two subroutines. The first is dedicated to producing the slowed down refresh rate demonstration and the second represents the normal routine. Let's cover the increasing refresh routine. The first thing up is a call to display convert binary which will convert the three 
data bytes, which are labeled show working, show register, and show temp, from the binary value of just 0, 1 to the characters representative of a 0, 1. The next call here actually refreshes the display, and we'll be taking a closer look at that in a moment. The next four commands deal with the slowly increasing refresh rate. Display P count keeps track of the current refresh rate value, which is slowly decreased with each pass, and when the refresh rate reaches zero, we skip this go to command here and slide into the second half of the main routine. The display convert binary routine works by making an assumption that any one digit is going to be a zero. Next, the actual register's value is tested to see if it is a 1, and if it is, W is then loaded with an ASCII value of 1. This value is then moved into the appropriate memory display location. This process is repeated for all the bits in the show working register, and then we move on to update the rest of the display with the contents of show register and show temp. You'll also notice that some of the move WF commands have an addition attached to the end. This is how the arrays are accessed. Since I want the base address of the array plus one here, the command has a plus one appended. So, for example, let's say this array starts at memory address 0x20. So the label display mem display one is equal to the address 0x20. And with a plus one added, the memory address is equal to 0x21. So this command would move the contents of W into the memory address located at 0x21. There's actually a far more efficient way to code this function using indirect F. But when I'm coding something new like this, I like to keep the routines as straightforward and simple as possible. And then once everything is working, I'll come back through and optimize the code. In fact, I think I'll do a video on optimizing this large routine down into a small one. Okay, moving on. Here we have the actual refresh routine, which is controlled by a variable named display did show. Depending on the value of display did show, the routine updates either the first, second, third, or fourth digit. Once we've reached the fourth digit, display did show is reset to zero. Now, as a catch, I have this go to here in place just in case display did show's value somehow exceeds three. If it does, then the routine will slide into display refresh ditch 4 and carry on happily as if nothing had happened. The actual refresh routine consists of updating display did show's value for the next pass, copying the values in the display memory to W, getting the seven segment display code, and then sending the data out to the serial shift registers. You'll also notice that we start with the last digit and work our way to the first. This is because the serial shift register that is first in the chain is digit 1, so we want to send its data out last. The ASCII lookup routine is a simple lookup table that converts ASCII characters to the code we need to properly display that character on a 7 segment display. Now I'm sure you've noticed that some of these characters don't contain any data. Well, that's because there are a number of characters that can't be shown on a 7 segment display. W, V, and X are just a few examples of these. Now, I know this short look at the code probably isn't as detailed as you might have liked, but I've done a number of videos on multiplexing 7 segment displays, as well as dot matrix displays. Everything I've done here is based on those designs. And as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. I'm always willing to help others. Okay, that's it for this video. Take care and thanks for watching. Also, be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe.